Good morning, Andrews University. You know, when I woke up this morning and looked outside my window and I saw the snow falling down and I wonder if anyone would show up at all. But here you all are, so thank you for coming. And thank you, Chaplain Price, for the invitation. You know, I just have to say, it is such an honor for me to stand here today and to speak to you. Ever since um, I watched Pastor Dwight's sermon on YouTube, I liked it so much that I watched it over again and again, and many times I translated it into my language. And it is such an honor to preach here today. Well, as you have heard the introduction from my sister, I was born and raised in a beautiful country called Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. Yes, thank you. In case if you didn't know where that was, if you look at the map, Myanmar, Burma is right in between India and Thailand. You know, I just have to say that because I find it interesting. What I find interesting is that here in America, most Americans that I've met have no clue when it comes to the geography of the rest of the world. So <laughs> I just have to say that. But no offense, all right, no offense. Um, well, so I, I, I was born and raised in Burma. It's all the way in Southeast Asia. And when my family moved here in 2012, we moved to Maryland. So I'm from the East Coast. Anyone from the East Coast? Yes. You see, this gives me peace because the Bible says that the wise men came from the East. So I'm glad about that. <laughs> but in matters like this, to be wise is to ask God for his presence. So would you bow your heads with me as I pray one more time. Father God in heaven. I am a sinner saved by your grace. And so I ask you to hide me behind the cross so that your students here, your people here will see your face and not my face, that they will hear your voice and not my voice. I pray that you will touch everyone's heart here today with the power of the Holy Spirit. Convict us of our shortcomings and our sins. I not only pray for those who are present here, but I also pray for those that will be watching from online, from whatever gadget it is, whenever it is that they're watching this, I pray that you'll be with them as well. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our theme for this week of prayer, as you can see behind me, is Jesus the catalyst. I don't know what comes to your mind when you hear the word catalyst, but for me, whenever I hear the word catalyst, my mind goes back to the biology or chemistry classes that I've taken. And if you think back to your high school science classes, you've probably learned something about catalyst. And for me, when I hear the word catalyst, I'm reminded of something to do with something about catalyst and something to do with a reaction. And according to dictionary.com, we'll have it on the screen here, uh, catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without itself undergoing any permanent chemical change. Or another uh, definition can be a person or a thing that precipitates an event. So catalyst is something that causes change. I don't know if you have tried this experiment, let's have it on the screen, where you put a Mentos mint in a bottle of Coke. By show of hands, can I see how many of you have tried this experiment? <laughs> Quite a lot of you, yes. What we have here is that when you drop a Mentos mint into a bottle of Coke, that starts a change of reaction. And for those, who are, those of you who are studying science, you probably know a lot more about this than me. When you drop a Mentos mint, it functions as a catalyst in a way it lowers the activation energy required for the production of the carbon dioxide gas that creates the pressure, the gas, and the foams. And as a result, it pushes the liquid up and out of the bottle and creates an eruption. That is the function of a catalyst. Now go with me to Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. To save time, we'll have the text on the screen. This is according to the New Living Translation, Matthew chapter 13, verse 
33. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three, three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. You see, in ancient Palestine, this was a very common way of making bread. They would take the flour and mix it with a little bit of yeast or leaven. And when you mix it and bake it, the leaven will permeate through every part of the flour and the dough. And when you bake it, it rises, it expands, and you have a leavened bread. That is the function of a catalyst. It causes, it changes from the inside out. And according to Jesus, the kingdom of God, the gospel, is just like a leaven, a yeast. Oftentimes, leaven in the Bible is used in a negative context. But here, Jesus used it in a positive context to talk about the growth that the gospel can bring into a person's heart when accepted inside and make changes from the inside out. You see, friends, the problem is that we human beings, because we have fallen into sin in our very own nature, we cannot transform ourselves by the exercise of our will. No mere external change is sufficient to bring us into harmony with God. Many Christians, many times, we try to reform ourselves by correcting our habits, changing our external behaviors without the change inside our hearts. In our very nature, we are corrupted by sin. And we love to sin. We may try to do some behavior modification and have an outside change and once in a while clean up, clean up ourselves from this or that bad habits. But at the end of the day, if we're not changed from the inside out, we go right back to the same sin over and over again. And that leads us to guilt, shame, and pain, and so many more. We love to sin, and we love the things of this world. But because we were created by God in the beginning, our true happiness and in our utmost happiness and joy was to be found in worshiping our Creator, and living in harmony with his principles. But the problem is because of our sins, we have been separated from God. And we have no power in us to change ourselves. You see, deep within every heart, regardless of your religion, you may be a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Muslim, or wherever you are from, what language you speak, or whatever your educational attainment is. In every one of us, deep inside our heart, there is a hole. There's a spiritual void and emptiness in every one of us. And it produces fear, anxiety, discouragement, and a longing for true happiness and a purpose. You see, we try to fill this emptiness in our hearts with so many things. So many things. We try to fill this spiritual void in many ways. Some of us try to fill this void and find happiness with material possessions. We buy houses, cars, every new gadget that is out in the market, iPhones, iPads, drones, etc. You name it. Some of us try to fill this void with meaningful jobs, financial security, education, degrees, books, entertainment. For some of us, it may be Xbox, PlayStation, or every other gaming apps and systems out there where we try to get to the next level of the gaming. Some of us try to fill this void with fame or with social media. Can I be real here? By the number of friends, we, we define our worth and value by the number of friends we have on Facebook, and the number of followers we have on Instagram, or the number of viewers we have on our stories of Instagram or Snapchat, or the number of likes we get on our post, or the number of snap streaks we can maintain with our friends. For what? Just to get to that next level special emoji when you keep for 100 days? I don't know. You see, some of us try to fill this void following the trends, by following the trends of this world, or celebrities in the music and entertainment business. Some of us try to fill this void with Netflix and chill, or with movies, or with TV shows. Could be such as Stranger Things, Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead, The Big Bang Theory, 
How I Met Your Mother, House of Cards, Westworld, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, Outlander, Narcos, Modern Family, or Orange is the New Black, to name a few. You see, some of us try to fill this void and this emptiness in our hearts with so many things. Some of us try to fill it with fashion, sports, drugs, sex, relationship. We spend and invest so much of our time in all of these that the world can offer. But at the end of the day, all these things are just, at best, a temporary fix. They're like a band-aid that stops the bleeding for a short moment, but doesn't heal the wound. You see, we may be able to change outwardly from the outside, but the harder we try, we realize how impossible it is for us to change ourselves from the inside. We need a special catalyst in us to start from the inside, to change us from the inside out. What we need is someone like a Mentos that will come into us, come into our lives, change us from the inside, start a reaction, and blow out the shame and pains of our hearts and minds and fill us not with Coke or the things of this world, but with the living Spirit of God. And to that, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Jesus, the Mentos, the catalyst for our lives, who can truly change us from the inside out. Jesus came into this world about 2,000 years ago. He lived a life of humility, and he died on the cross, paid the penalty for sin, so that you and I will have the freedom through him, so that you and I can have that true fulfillment and that we may have that joy in our hearts and our longing and desire for a purpose and a reason to live. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the answer. You see, if we choose to accept Jesus in our hearts, just like a leaven, just like a catalyst, Jesus will change us and transform us from inside out, washing away our impurities, and he will regulate our desires, purify our thoughts, and give us a new identity. See, this is not just theory. This is something real. We can be the catalyst for joy, change and joy for Jesus in return in someone else's life as we introduce them to the true and only catalyst, Jesus. You see, the only thing we need to do is ask Jesus to change us from the inside out. And once he comes into our life, he will start a reaction that will have a ripple effect in something like this. You see, that has a good illustration. You know why? Many times, even after accepting Jesus, if you do not continue to open your hearts to God, if we do not choose to con continue our hearts, opening our hearts to God. Our ripple effects, our ministry cannot go as far as it could if only we have the Spirit of God living in us again. Let's try one more time. Thank you, chaplain, for this idea. This was a great idea. Please always remember what Jesus can do in our lives and what we are without the help of God. Allow me to share with you my personal testimony of how Jesus has been my catalyst and how Jesus changed my life. As I have mentioned, I was born and raised in Burma, Myanmar, and it's uh, my grandfather was from Mizoram, India, and he moved to Burma, and he married a Burmese lady. My grandmother was originally a Buddhist, but she became a Christian later on. That's another story in and of itself for another time. You see, Myanmar, Burma, my country has about 54 million people living in it, and about 90% of the populations are all Buddhist. 
about 4% Islam, and about 4% Christianity. And out of that, our Ad Adventist present, our membership is about 30,000 out of 54 million people. So you can tell. You see, I was fortunate to be brought up in an Adventist family. My father became an Adventist when I was about three years of age. I was so fortunate. But you see, being an Adventist in a country like that, where the government was the military junta, was not always easy. As I went to public school, oftentimes I was challenged by my friends, and I had to defend my faith many times to my fellow Christians or many times to my Buddhist friends. I had to defend from a very young, young age of why I believe Jesus or why I don't go to school on Saturdays or why I don't eat this or that. You see, from a very young age, I made that decision. and I told myself, you know what, if I'm going to face this many questions and if, I'm, if I have to explain to my friends, then I want to make sure that what I believe in is something real and true. And I don't want to believe this just because my parents handed this down to me. And so at a very young age, I started studying by myself as much as I can, listening to the pastors, reading the Word of God. And you see what I saw, what I found was that Jesus was real. As I compared different religions as much as I can, especially Buddhism and Christianity. You see, in every religion, there are good teachings. Gautama Buddha, he left many good teachings on how to be kind to one another, how to be kind to animals, and so on and so forth. But here's the difference. Only Jesus offered a true power to change me from inside out. Only Jesus could do that. So I decided at the age of 11 to officially accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior and be baptized on April 23, 2005. Oh, I still remember that joy that came into my heart as I accepted Jesus. He gave me a new identity. I was a child of God. I became a child of God. And he gave me so much confidence in who I was. Even though I did not have many things, many material things, I had Jesus. You see, my education pursuit has taken me, as my sister has mentioned, about nine years in Myanmar and two years in India, three years in the Philippines, and now about three and a half years or so here in the United States. I could tell you countless stories of how God opened opportunities for me to get involved in ministry and be a catalyst for Him. Um, if we can have the picture on the screen. You see, my family, when my family moved to uh, continue our education in the Philippines, I was given many opportunities. I met so many good friends in the Philippines, and I was uh, get involved in orphanage ministry on Sabbath afternoons, doing outreach ministry. And at the age of 18, group, a group of my friends, we went out to the village in the Philippines and did evangelism meetings there. We had a great time. Moving on, when my family moved here in 2012, my father got a call to work as a pastor in the Mizzou Church in Maryland, and when my family moved to Maryland, I got the opportunity to study at Washington Adventist University. And there I had so many opportunities for leadership positions to get involved in campus ministries. But you know, I was not satisfied. I told God, God, I want to spend a year as a student missionary. Send me somewhere, send me anywhere. So I started looking for open positions, but things just didn't work out. But to make the long story short, in the end, I got accepted to work as a volunteer youth minister in Hawaii. I know what you're thinking. Oh, it couldn't be that difficult, right? <laughs> but you see, I didn't plan that. But here was the problem. I did not have any money. I was just an undergrad, college student. So I prayed to God, you know, and I checked the flight ticket, the cost for the ticket. And what I found was that one way from Washington, D.C. to uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, would cost about $600, and a return ticket would cost about another 600 So I told God, God, I need about, you know, uh, $1,200, so you need to give me at least 1200 or at least 600 on my way, right? And around the time while I was praying, I got an invitation to speak, at, uh, a re to speak for a revival meeting among our non-denominational Mizo church in North Carolina. And I went there, and you know what? On Sunday, after I finished my sermon, they handed me an envelope to show their appreciation. Now, this group, they had no idea I was planning to go to Hawaii, nor did they know I needed money. But guess how much was inside that envelope? Exactly $1,200. You see, it was so amazing. And I, 
I was filled with joy and I went out to Hawaii and as you can see on the pictures, I had a great time in Hawaii serving as a volunteer youth minister for a year. I met a lot of great and amazing people. They embraced me with the aloha spirit, welcomed me into their families. Oh, I could tell you so many miracles that God performed in my life. I, I, I got to enjoy the beauty of Hawaii, hiking, snorkeling, surfing, snuba diving, you name it. I had a blast. Most of all, I grew so much as a person through my service for God, and I realized it was all Jesus. It was all Jesus. And, 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 and before I returned from Hawaii, I told God, God, if you want me to go into full-time ministry, I need a job, and I'm about to graduate. And I called my conference and my youth director, and it so happened that it was around the time they were looking for a youth pastor for the Eastern Shore and assist the youth director in the conference. And so I said, sign me up. So they signed me up, and for a year and a half, I worked at the Eastern Shore of the Chesapeake Conference, visiting churches, working with the youth and the young adults, Pathfinder events, and you name it. I got to work with amazing pastors, and I grew so much. And before I even asked, my conference president told me, Buya, the conference would like to sponsor you for your seminary studies. And once you're done, we'll bring you back here. Oh, it was God opening doors for me so that I could reach out more people for him. And I was so humble at this, and here I am at Andrews University studying Masters of Divinity, standing here and sharing you my testimony. You see, friends, I am a living testimony of how good God is and how Jesus can change someone. You see, I was nobody. I was just nobody from in the middle of nowhere, in the corner of the world that nobody knows about. But God gave me so many opportunities to witness for him. What more can I ask for? You see, friends, in life, we will face many temptations and we will have to make many choices. But let us remember this. The choice and the decision that Jesus offers us is so much better than anything that this world can ever offer to us. So friends, I ask you today, do you have that longing in your heart for a transformation? Do you long for someone to fill the void in your heart? Or do you wish you will find the true joy of your heart? I ask you to invite Jesus into your heart. Study his word and pray. He will be the catalyst. He will work in your heart and change you from the inside out and give you a new identity. Or maybe you have already accepted Jesus, but you don't know what's next. Then I ask you to pray to God to open doors for you to serve him more, more opportunities. An example, you could go to the campus ministry's office and sign up for mission opportunities, short term or long term. Give God a year as a student missionary somewhere. You see, the world is more than just Andrews University. The world is just more, more, more than just Barron Spring or Michigan or just America. There's a whole world out there. Even if you cannot go abroad, you can serve right here at home. You can get involved in a local church, join a ministry, outreach ministry, or stop by the ASAP ministry office and find out how you can reach out to refugees and immigrants that have moved into this country. And so, friends, with this, finally, it is my prayer that we will invite, we will all invite Jesus into our hearts. Let him be the catalyst. Let him change us from the inside out. Let him be the catalyst in our everyday lives, in our family, in our classrooms, in our dorms, in Andrews University, in Michigan, in America, and the rest of the world. That is my prayer. If that is your prayer, I invite you all to stand with me as we close this worship with a prayer. But be before we pray, this is impromptu, but I believe it will be good for us to sing the song, Into My Heart. If you know the song, join me in that song. Into my heart, into my, come into my heart, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, 
Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Today, come in to, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, today we learn from the scripture that Jesus is the answer and that Jesus is the catalyst that we all need in our lives. God, there may be someone here today who wants to give you their heart but is struggling with an addiction. Whatever addiction that may be, God, I pray that you will go into that person's heart and change from the inside out and give them the power, the Holy Spirit. There may be someone who have already accepted you, Lord, but don't know what's next. For that person, I pray that, God, you will open more opportunity to serve you. God, be with us. Fill us with your spirit as we all seek knowledge here. Affirm our faith in you and change the world. This we pray, knowing that you will answer them because we pray in the precious and loving name of Jesus. Amen. God, God bless you all, my friends.